All right, this is John Cobo with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And as you guys can see, I'm having a jackfruit party in my house. And you're not invited. Only my girlfriend is. <laughs> We're going to get to enjoy these uh, delicious jackfruits here one at a time. Actually, one of them we're going to get to eat right after I'm done with my video. In any case, the reason for this episode today is to share with you guys one of my top favorite fruits in the whole wide world and a very important skill that you will need to have in order to get a good one. Because let me tell you, the difference between a good jackfruit and one that's lousy is huge. And if you get a lousy one, like my first experience when I bought a jackfruit for the first time, I was like, man, that fruit sucks. I never want to eat that again. But if you get a good one the first time, you're like, oh my God, I'm in heaven. This stuff is so good. It's like, it's like I'm eating bubble gum the entire meal, but it's actually healthy for me. And check it, check it out. If you guys don't know what jackfruit is, this is uh, probably the world's largest tree fruit, right? It can be up to 100 pounds. This fruit here is an impressive like 37 pounds. Some of these other fruits maybe like around, I don't know, 10 pounds, 11 pounds, 12 pounds maybe. But yeah, they grow in all shapes and sizes. Uh, bigger's not necessarily uh, better, although it can be, as you guys will learn, because in this episode, what I'll be teaching you guys is my top 10, maybe 11 tips on how to pick the best jackfruit possible from your local store. I'm not talking about how to pick one on a tree, because that's a whole different set of skills that I might share in another video. I haven't had as much experience picking them right off the tree. Actually, it's a lot easier picking them off the tree, because all you gotta use is use your nose, right? Use your nose and you can smell the jackfruit when it's truly ripe on the tree. You probably don't need to know all these other things that I'm going to share with you guys. In this episode, this is important for those of us that don't have a jackfruit tree in our backyard, um, you know, that have to go to the store and buy one as close to ripe as possible as we could get it, right? When they're on the tree, literally they're going to drop off the tree when they're ripe enough to eat. They're also, you're going to smell them from like, you know... <laughs> I don't know, an eighth a mile away, literally, if the wind's going your direction, you'll be smelling them. So this is for those of us that aren't lucky to have your tree, and you have to pick one out in the store, because when they are picked and sold in commerce in the store, right, they're not, they're not ever optimally ripe, right? Maybe if you're buying it from a farmer's at a farmer's market, you know, you're going to get it at a higher level of ripeness, but if you're buying it at the Asian store, they're being imported like most jackfruits are, you know, you got to do the best you can, and even if you do the best you can, you're probably going to get actually a halfway decent fruit. Now, I've had fresh fruit off the tree that's been so ripe it literally like melts in my mouth or not quite melts because it was like a, a chewy kind and it's so gelatinous and sweet and gooey. I don't know if it's my favorite because there's two kinds of jackfruit, crunchy and chewy kind and, you know, each have their pros and cons. But anyways, I'm going to tell you guys how to pick out one from the store. So without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> Top 10 tips. And then we're going to go ahead and actually show you guys how I open one and some other interesting uh, facts and information about jackfruit so you guys could start being a jackfruit consumer. <laughs> All right. So uh, first tip I want to give you guys uh, to buy a, a ripe, really good tasting jackfruit is go to a store that sells a lot of jackfruit, right? Super critical, super important, right? If you go to a store and they have like one or two jackfruits, on display and you have the choice between this one or this one or maybe one that's even more green and one that's maybe you know really looking bad you only have two options right I like to go to the Asian markets actually sometimes Mexican markets actually I got all these guys at a local Mexican market that threw jackfruit up on sale this week for 50 cents a pound which is actually below the wholesale price I go to the wholesale produce terminal and that may not necessarily be the best place to buy jackfruit either because you may not have this big selection. But in general, the terminal, they may run between 55 cents to 85 cents depending on who you're buying it from and what condition it's in, right? But that being said, um, you know, I've seen jackfruit sell for as much as $1.99 on the East Coast at, you know, big whole paycheck stores. Uh, that being said, that might be a good idea to buy there because they have a a guarantee on everything they sell. So if you buy jackfruit at Whole Foods, you don't like it, take it back with your receipt. They'll give you a refund, right? Because it wasn't ripe enough. Serves them right for selling unripe fruit. But uh, yeah, so go to a place that actually sells a lot of jackfruit. This means they're going to have not just one or two or three jackfruit on display that you guys could choose from, but they have these big, you know, pallet container flats of jackfruit. When I went to select these out, they had just put out like, 
I don't know, 10 cases of jackfruit. Each case of jackfruit may contain one, two, or three fruit. So there was a big pile of jackfruit, and because I knew the sale was starting on Wednesday, I got there early Wednesday morning, right as they put all the new fruit out, so I could get first dibs. Very important, because if you come later, you know, then you're going to get second dibs, and there might be the ones that are not so good left. So anyways, go to a place that has a lot, that has a big selection. So I found various places in Southern California, in the valley, you know, some of the Asian markets in the valley that have a really good selection of jackfruit. In San Francisco, like Chinatown, in Las Vegas, there's this place called SF Supermarket on Spring Mountain in Decatur. They tend to have the largest selection of jackfruit. So you guys could uh, use my other tips to find the best one out of all of them. The bigger the pool, the, you know, the, the better your chances of getting a good one. Tip number two, this is probably the most important tip, maybe even more important than tip number one, <laughs> is use your nose. And sorry for those of you guys that can't smell anymore, you guys are out of luck. Find somebody that can smell and bring them with you to select your jackfruit because that's your number one uh, sense that's going to help you out in getting a right jackfruit is your smell. If you could smell these guys and it smells like a bubble gum, that's the one you want to get, right? You want to get one that's nice and odiferous and, and smells really good and delicious, right? Number one way. Unfortunately, right, if they're not super optimally ripe, they're not going to smell at all. Even if it could be eaten, it doesn't mean it's going to produce an odor. And of course, some people's noses are more sensitive than others. But yeah, number one is smell. Generally, the uncut fruit, it has to be fairly ripe so that it starts to smell so it's even easier if you get the cut fruit, you know, you could smell it through the plastic, it starts to smell really good. So third tip to selecting a good jackfruit is the interior color or the fruit color. I'm not talking the exterior color, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But the interior color of the jackfruit or of the fruits themselves are a telltale sign if they're good or not, right? Unripe fruit on the inside, the color of the fruit, as you guys will see at the end of this video, um, you know, a, a, a unripe fruit is going to be like pale, like almost maybe even looking white, maybe just a tad bit yellow, tad bit orange. But a ripe fruit, the interior color is a fully dark, like a nice vibrant, like yellow or a nice vibrant orange. So you want to get the darker color, the better in general for ripeness of fruit. And in general, the only way you're going to see if the interior color is ripe is if you're buying a pre-cut fruit or uh, you know fruit that's been actually depotted so they they have them in little containers for you and then you'll be able to see through the plastic and smell through the plastic you'll be able to see the color so that's by far the safest way to buy the jackfruit is to buy pre-cut you know generally if places pre-cut the jackfruit they're going to charge you more money for it so i'm pretty cheap and i usually just buy the whole fruit and that's where some of my tips will come in for you guys because trust me i've bought big jackfruits before that have not tasted good and it made me really not want to buy another one because these fruits can be an investment. This 37 pound fruit, if it was a dollar a pound, it'd be 37 bucks. Luckily I got it for about half that because I got them for 50 cents a pound and I'm pretty confident in my decision that I chose a good one. Tip number four on selecting a good jackfruit is the exterior color. Super critical, super important. Unfortunately, most jackfruit is being harvested before the time it should be harvested. <laughs> which means uh, the skin is going to be a, a lot more greener than it should be under optimally ripe conditions. So in the case where you go to an Asian market that has lots of jackfruit, right, if they're super dark green, right, those are the ones in general that you're not going to want to buy. You're going to want to try to find one out of all the different jackfruits on display, find one that's more yellow, right? Uh, that's in general good or maybe even more yellow or golden brown is even a better color because I find the golden brown ones generally are the ones that are orange inside that I actually like more than the ones that are yellow on the inside. But yeah, you want to look for a nice golden color or a yellow color, dark color appear, appealing uh, to the eye and the senses. As you guys can see, some of these, you know, are a little bit more, uh, uh, a little bit more green, some of them a little more lighter in color. And, uh, you know, that does make a difference. In general, if there's only dark green fruit, I will not buy them. I'll walk out of the store. But I also will use some of the other criteria that's uh, coming up in just a minute. So tip number five, one of the most important criteria in selecting an uncut jackfruit is you want to look at the, actually the spikes on the fruit. Some people might get jackfruit 
confused with durian. Durian has those really sharp pointed spikes that'll really hurt if one of those fruits drop on you. Uh, the spikes of the jackfruit aren't quite as pronounced, but here's the thing, especially when the fruit gets riper, the, uh, the spikes actually kind of go down and dissipate. So let me show you guys what I mean. So this fruit, on the top of the fruit, I don't know if you guys can see that, I'll hold it up for you guys, but these spikes are a little bit spiky, you know, they're kind of pointed up like a, like a mountain, right? On a mountain, on a mountain peak, you know, the mountain peaks kind of like really goes up and it comes to a nice big point, right? On a riper jackfruit, what's going to happen is those mountains that are like this are going to kind of mellow out and kind of go flat. So like, I, even though this one is small, I really like that the, uh, the mountains on this, right, have kind of gone down. They've kind of subsided. They've kind of flattened out a little bit. So, you know, that's a very important indicator, especially in the bottom here, right? They flattened out a lot. So uh, I think this little small jackfruit might really be a good one. So that's one of the things you'll definitely want to look for. Tip number six on picking out a ripe jackfruit, also something very important, you know, is soft to the touch, right? You want to be able to like take the jackfruit and push your finger into it, and especially on the bottom, right? It should give to just a gentle pressure. It's kind of like an avocado, right? Right as an avocado starts to go ripe, right? It's a little bit soft, not too soft, because too soft, sometimes I've gotten in stores and pushed my finger through the jackfruit, you know, parts that have been rotten before, that's no good, because um, you don't want get one that's starting to rot. But you want it to yield to gentle pressure. And like all these fruits here, they generally all yield to general pressure. It, this big one maybe yields a little bit less, but uh, these smaller ones, I bought them all because they yield to some general pressure. Here, I'll let me move this guy up for you guys. And I don't know if you guys can see my finger pop into that, right? I'm pressing into it and it yields to general pressure. Oh, here in the back, look at that. See my finger kind of going in? That's definitely a good sign that could be quite good and uh, I could even smell it just a little bit. Tip number seven, also very important tip, is you want to select the jackfruit heavy for its size. This is also true in other fruits as well, right? The more dense the fruit is, the more watery it's going to be, then generally the more sweet it's going to be, right? So you're not getting some dried out fruit that's going to be dry and not so juicy on the inside. So despite this little fruit right here is like the smallest fruit, and even so, it's almost quite as big as my head, um, this fruit's probably about 10 pounds, and actually it's quite heavy for its size. I picked up this fruit, you know, I saw that some of the spikes were kind of flattened already. I saw it yielded to general pressure. I saw the color was fairly good, you know, it's got some nice uh, golden colors in there. But when I picked it up, I'm like, wow, this little small thing, it's like a bowling ball, man. It's so heavy. It's like 10 pounds right here. And I picked up other fruit about the same size, maybe a little bit bigger in the store, compared them, and they were lighter. I was like, wow, this must be a good one, man. It's actually nice and heavy. So yeah, and if you don't know how much a jackfruit should weigh, that's all right. Find ones of similar size in the store and pick them up and weigh them, right, in your hand. And you can kind of see like, hey, that one's a few pounds less than the other one. So that heavier one may also be riper. Now, I don't want you to just, I got the, I got the heaviest one, John. It was bad. It wasn't good. Well, that's because besides being heavy, you want to include all these different criteria that I'm telling you. So you want to get one that has all these perfect criteria lined up. Get your, all, your, get your ducks all lined up in a row and you're going to get a good jackfruit for sure. Tip number eight, I want to show you guys actually you want to get a jackfruit with a nice shape, right? All these jackfruits have fairly nice shapes except one. I kind of feel like I'm on Sesame Street or something, right? Which one is different? Is it this one, this one, this one, this one, or this one? If you said this one, you'd be right. Because check it out. All these jackfruits, like, they have a really nice shape. You know, this is kind of like a pear shape. I don't know, maybe apple shape. And this is maybe like a pear shape. Um, they're all kind of similar conforming, except this guy right here, right? Look at this guy. This guy is kind of like got a nice shape on the bottom, nice and round, but at the top it kind of comes up and it kind of comes to a smaller point, right? It's kind of funky at the top and actually in addition it's got another issue, it's got some stem rot, but that's another topic. Uh, but it's got a funky shape. So in general, uh, if I'm picking a jackfruit out of the store, I don't like to get one that has a funky shape. Now why is that? Like if I was growing them on my tree and one had a funky shape, I wouldn't really worry about it. But the thing is, when you're buying that at the store, you're paying it. You're paying for the jackfruit per pound. And in general, if you have a funky shape like this top is not formed quite as nicely as this top, right? All in the funky shape part that's not formed well is going to be no fruit. So you, basically, you're paying for extra air space or extra weight that's not going to translate into delicious, yummy fruit for you. 
So uh, yeah, I saw how this was maybe misshaped, but I also like that you know some of the some of the mountains were flattened and it had yielded to general pressure and it actually has a fairly nice color. So yeah, so it met some of my other criteria. So I got it nonetheless. Plus it was probably one of the best fruits at the whole place. And plus the jackfruit this week was only 50 cents a pound, so I could not resist. Tip number nine I want you guys to be aware of is the size of the fruit. In general, but not always, bigger is better. But not always, it just depends because there's different, many different varieties of jackfruit and unfortunately none of the ones that are being imported do they explain or label them with the variety type. If you knew the variety type then you could know if that variety type was generally made smaller fruit or larger fruit so you could determine if you should get a big one or a small one. Unfortunately all the jackfruit is just sold as jackfruit with no varietal or cultivar listed so when you're picking them at the store, you just kind of use some of these other senses. But what I would like to say is that in general, larger fruits have developed much longer on the tree and may generally be riper. Now aside from the largest of the fruit, I also want you guys to look at the size of the stem, right? And this is not cut and dry by any means. So I don't want you, John, I got one with a large stem. It was bad. Well, once again, Taking the stem size into consideration, taking the fruit size into consideration is just one of the many factors that you should consider. So for example, you know, if you had, and this is not always true, but if you have the same variety of fruits, right, and one, you know, these, these two fruits are pretty much the same, and this fruit has a smaller stem, and this fruit has a larger stem, and all else factors being equal, I'd rather have the jackfruit with the larger stem. In general, they may be better than the one with the smaller stem. Nonetheless, you know, two of these jackfruits here today, uh, these two guys actually have small stems, but to st bite the small stems, I still pick them out because they met my other criteria. Um, you know, so once again, it's it's just uh, basically you gotta figure out which ones are the most important. And yeah, size of the fruit, stem size, they're not super critical. That's why I'm mentioning them later in this episode. So another factor that you will want to can take into consideration when selecting a jackfruit is, besides just the color of the fruit, I want you guys to look for some brown spotting on the fruit, right? Brown spotting may be an indicator of ripeness, but it also may be an indicator of rot, right? <laughs> so, uh, in, for example, like this fruit, right, it's, it's pretty like uh, nice, has a decent color, not the best color because it's maybe a little more green than I'd like it. I like it a little more golden. And, you can see some of the golden coming out, but you can see like not la lots of nice like brown splotches throughout the fruit, right? Some of this could be chill damage, but some of it also could be as the fruit ripens, it kind of gets a bit brown. But the other thing is you also want to check all the spots and, and do a visual inspection to make sure that none of these spots your finger goes into because it could also be rot, right? Over on this fruit, you know, we also got a lot of browning here. You know, you can really see the brown spots on this one. Also, my, my fingers go into pretty good. But the browning on the top here, if I push my finger in it, I don't know if I'll do that for you guys. But look, oh, my finger went into that. <laughs> so that's actually rot. So uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend buying a fruit that was uh, rotten. And if you do have rot in your fruit, number one thing, that's the next one you need to eat. Number two thing is if you're not going to eat it immediately, cut it to get that rot out, to compost it and then you could preserve the rest of the fruit for longer in your fridge. And uh, once the fruit starts to rot, I try to cut out the rot, put it in the fridge as soon as possible. And uh, I've even had luck, like if the fruit is rotting, then I'll do like an ozone water dip. So I, I put activated, I make it, I have an ozone generator that uh, washes my fruits and vegetables to kill the bacteria. I'll do the ozone water dip of the jackfruit all the sides. And actually that'll halt some of the bacteria that's causing the rot. And then that'll allow me to keep my fruit a little bit longer. But you still got to eat it as soon as possible. Of course, the best thing to do after you start seeing rot is to carve the whole jackfruit up and depot it and then save all the pods, right? I personally like to always store my fruit in the fruit vessel or the fruit itself. So I'll show you guys my techniques at the end. So my last tip for you guys on picking a good jackfruit, and yes, be wary of the rot, right? In general, I don't like to pick a rotten fruit unless it's like the only one that meets all my other criteria and it's a small rotted spot. I might just buy it and know that, hey, I'm gonna get a pretty good fruit. Because in general too, if it's rotted, there's a hole in it, then you could put your nose in there and you could smell it. Also, sometimes in the rotted stuff, you could actually see the color of the fruit. So that can be a benefit as well. But anyways, my last tip is kind of like one of my tips on watermelons. If you have challenges picking watermelons, 
If I remember, I'll post a link down below on how to pick a watermelon. I share my top tips on how to pick a watermelon. Uh, but much like a watermelon, right, you want to tap your jackfruit. And actually, a jackfruit, when you tap it, should pretty much sound like a watermelon. You guys hear the difference? You want to have a, a nice hollow sound. All these sound pretty hollow. They all sound pretty good. I mean, they're all pretty consistent. So you want to have a nice hollow sound. This is a nut, yet another indicator that you're going to get a good jackfruit. So now that you guys heard my top 10 tips on selecting a ripe jackfruit, you guys can go out to the store and do the best you can. And you know, just like any skill, like when you first learn how to walk, right, when you're a baby, you might want to got up, you might, you started crawling first, and maybe you got up on two legs and you, bam, you fell over, right? You might fail, but that's all right. If you fail, get right up and start back and try to walk again or try to pick another better jackfruit the next time. So if you, here's my tips. If you do get an unripe jackfruit that's not super sweet, not super dark, right, that's great, right? Jackfruit is used also uh, cooked. So they flavor up unripe jackfruit and they flavor with different seasonings and whatnot. And when you cook it up and you eat unripe jackfruit, it has the texture of chicken or meat. And so for people that don't eat meat, right, you guys could go out to the whole paycheck, Whole Foods, and buy these jackfruit meat substitutes, right, that are usually sold in the vegan section. But if you get an unripe jackfruit, you can do that yourself. Another thing I like to do with unripe jackfruit that I have done in the past is you could freeze it and then just add it to smoothies with some bananas and some other fresh fruits that are sweet so it'll taste better so at least you can get some of the nutrition and the fiber from the jackfruit into you. Another thing you guys can do with uh, unripe jackfruit. So the next thing I thought I'd do is actually I thought I'd bring out one of my ripe jackfruits and actually share with you guys how I cut into it and how I save it and how I eat it. So the next question you might be having is, John, I got a ripe jackfruit from the store. I got the best one thanks to you. What do I do with it once I get home, right? <laughs> Especially if you have five jackfruits, <laughs> you're going to want to manage them properly before they go bad. So this is my rules and this is how I do it. So in general, you know, none of these were in the perfect optimal shape to be eaten once I got them. I mean, I maybe could have like ate some if I really wanted to and they probably would have been all right. And here's the thing, right? Once the jackfruit is disconnected from the tree, right, the mother tree juice <laughs> or the sap can't get into the fruit, so the sweet will the fruit will never get any sweeter, uh, you know, than it already is. So the you know the the sweetness will not improve. That being said, there is a what's called ripening process where it kind of transforms and changes a little bit, right? So um, you might get a little bit softer, might change a little bit of color, you know, it's going to get a little bit better than it was, but it's not going to like significantly improve. Like if you have an unripe jackfruit, it's never going to turn ripe if it's, if it's, if it was picked too early off the tree and you can't just, oh, let's put it in the fridge for a while. <laughs> the nearly white jackfruit that's really unripe is not going to get sweeter for you guys, right? So that's why it's super important to pick a good one uh, from the get-go. But well, once you get them home, that's a whole nother topic, right? You want to take care of it properly once you get it home. So in general, here's my rule, right? If the fruit is like ripe and ready to eat, if there's, um, you know, like uh, uh, rot spots on it now, then immediately, without question, I put it in the fridge or eat it as my next meal, okay? Now, if the fruit's in pretty good condition, like, you know, when I bought this big giant one here, it was totally hard at the store. It wasn't one that I would necessarily pick out, but it was the largest one of the whole batch, and it had uh, almost all right color. It's still a bit too green for me to buy, but you know the the mountains were flattened out a little bit, and I kind of liked it. Plus, it was really large and just really oh, yeah, 30, 30, <laughs> 37 pounds here. <laughs> and yeah, somebody ripped off my video before I made a jackfruit video. But hey, jackfruit. It uh, could be one of the solutions to feed the world because it's a perennial tree crop. It grows year round and actually it's a, one of the most uh, longest uh, seasons of producing crops. If you have, especially if you have different varieties, you could eat jackfruit for literally six months out of the year or ripe jackfruit six months out of the year. But all year you can eat the unripe jackfruit, especially if you prepare it in uh, different ways. But yeah, jackfruit definitely uh, one of the most important uh, fruit crops in the whole world. It's a member of the breadfruit family. Also another really good uh, permaculture um, crop tree that could actually feed the world on perennial uh, foods instead of annual foods that have to keep getting replanted, right? The perennial foods, 
basically this goes for any tree fruit, right? They're much more sustainable and better uh, for the planet's health because you don't got to keep tilling the land up to grow them. Literally, you plant a tree once and it grows literally for potentially a hundred years and continues to produce fruit for you. Anyways, uh, this one was not optimally perfect when I bought it, but as it's been sitting around, it's gotten a little bit softer. Now it's uh, yielding to gentle pressure, and it's definitely going to get softer. So I, I got them in a little bit different stages. So this one I'm going to probably eat last, and uh, this guy I'm probably going to eat like uh, next, and then maybe like this guy next. This guy's still a bit firm, but I like the nice shape. This guy's still a little bit ways to go. So I'm going to, you know, eat these in the order that they ripen or the order that I need to eat them because they're actually uh, rotten on me. So that's another good thing. But here's the thing. When you store them, right, you want to always rotate them, you know. I like to store my jackfruit upright, you know, and maybe upright even better than this. Um, you know, I like to do them in little glass, uh, you know, bowls like this. And if you do that, you know, you, it'd, be, it'd behoove you to, uh, you know, uh, flip them over every once in a while because... The place where the, the fruit is hitting the ground, the contact point, is the part that can bruise and or mold more easily. Also, in a bowl, you know, it's not getting good air circulation. So I like to, like, rotate this on top of the bowl in different ways, like, every day. So that, you know, always the jackfruit is being rotated. Because much like, you know, there's disease that could sit in if you're lying in a bed in one position for a long time. Same thing with the jackfruit. I'll find that... If you keep jackfruit in a box and it's sitting in a box, especially in a covered box, because this is off-gassing ethylene, um, the bottom that's not getting the air circulation is the part that's going to rot first, and then you're not going to see that because it's on the bottom. But if every day you handle your fruit, right, and you turn it a little bit, whether that's in a box or whether you're going to put it in a bowl, stand them up, I think they kind of look pretty like this, um, it's going to be much better for the fruit. Now, I'm going to wait until... the to eat the fruit until actually it starts to rot a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. Sometimes it catches me off guard and I don't check it for a day or I go to town, my girlfriend didn't check it, and then a whole section is rotted. Don't worry, don't throw the fruit out because it looks pretty rotted. A lot of times the rot is only on the surface and a good portion of the jackfruit it, you know, inside will still be all right for you guys to eat. And in addition, even if it does rot, just cut off the rot part and eat the good part. But I will wait for these guys uh, to cut them open until I do see a little bit rot. And if I'm able to cut open that day and eat it, great. And if I got other food that I want to eat first, like I got tons of ripe mangoes right now, I'll actually, if I see some rot, it'll go right into the fridge. Generally, I don't like to fridge my jackfruit unless I see the rot on there because I want to keep them out of the fridge to ripen uh, further before I stop the ripening process by putting, putting them into the fridge. And, you know, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. On that, and then uh, once you are ready to eat it, let's go ahead now and show you guys how, to, how I open a jackfruit. So now I want to show you guys actually how I cut open a jackfruit. You know, and there's many ways to cut a jackfruit. I'm not going to say mine is the right way or the best way. I'm going to say this is the way I do it because I find it the funnest, and this is how I do it personally. So there's the giant size jackfruit we got. This guy was purchased uh, definitely before the last batch I got, so it's definitely more ready. You guys can see it has a little bit better color, a little bit more brown. It has been in the fridge a little while because I had to eat several jackfruits. So basically, you're going to need a few things to eat jackfruit. Number one, <laughs> depending on the ripeness of the jackfruit, right, you're going to need some coconut oil. You know, a lot of times using my techniques, I get pretty ripe jackfruit that generally I don't need to use the coconut oil. Because in general, what you're going to find is the riper the fruit, the less sticky latex there is. This is also dependent on the cultivar of the jackfruit, but in general... The ones I've been buying, the riper it is when I cut into them, there's virtually no latex. So the coconut oil is definitely really important for the latex. The only other thing you might need is like a cutting board and some knives. I like to use ceramic knives. And actually, this is my favorite knife here for a jackfruit. If I remember, I'll put a link down below this video. That's because it's nice and large so I can cut through a big portion of the jackfruit in one fall swoop instead of using something like a little small paring knife. That being said, I do like to have a paring knife on hand once I make some of the big initial cuts. I don't need the big clunky knife anymore. I need to like do some paring and some uh, cutting of the fruit on the inside. So the first step is you're going to take out the coconut oil and you're going to get lubed up, baby. And I only like to get uh, organic uh, coconut oil. This actually is from Thailand. Mm, nice uh, coconutty smell. We're going to take that coconut oil, rub it in like you're going to give somebody a massage. All right. We're just rubbing this in. Then the other thing you're going to want to do is you're going to go want to take some coconut oil onto the knife and make sure that, you know, you don't cut yourself when doing this. Uh, this is the back side of the blade. 
and so I'm not on the blade side. I'm just uh, literally smearing on the coconut oil onto the knife. You know, I've been getting lazy a lot lately, so I don't, I, I, a lot of times I don't actually do this step. And then of course, if you've got extra coconut oil, <laughs> just rub it in your skin. It's probably uh, good, it's good for your skin for sure. All right, so once you've got your knife all lubed up, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is cut. So once again, many ways to cut a, cut a jackfruit. And here's my idea, right? Unless I have like a big party of people that we're gonna eat this jackfruit immediately, in which case I'm gonna cut a little bit differently. You know, generally I cut enough for me and my girlfriend for one meal. And then I wanna keep the rest of the fruit sealed in the fruit itself to store in the fridge because the more the fruit is protected from the outside of the fruit skin, the longer it's gonna last. So. Uh, what I'm going to do now is we're going to probably cut open like uh, half of this jackfruit. That's probably a good uh, meal for me and my girlfriend. So we're just going to go ahead and take this knife and let's see if we could uh, cut it for you guys. We're just going to go ahead and cut it right in half. And I like to spin the jackfruit around as I'm cutting. And as you guys can see, the reveal. All right, did I do a good job? Look at that. This is a nice, deep, yellow fruit that's how you guys want it to look on the inside and then once you cut it open then you can start to smell it and oh yeah smells nice and floral so that's definitely a good sign because again this side looks pretty good also so uh, what i do is since i got two halves now what i'll usually do is i'll take parchment paper i'll put parchment paper over all this i'll take a rubber band and basically uh, put this uh, face down in my fridge on top of the parchment paper and it'll store at least another week sealed. I've been taking, you know, partially cut jackfruit to like on the plane with me to eat later. It lasts no problem whatsoever. Now, sometimes before I actually put this in the fridge on parchment paper, I'll just take out all the segments that I can access from here and eat them out. So then actually have another layer of protection instead of just fruit being exposed to the parchment. It's just basically empty pods being exposed to the parchment and the ones that I can't reach uh, will be protected by some of the inner core of the jackfruit. Now, for those of you guys that have never eaten jackfruit before, you know, when you buy a big jackfruit, unlike an apple that you could eat, you know, 98% of the apple except for the seeds and maybe the stem and whatnot, um, a lot of the jackfruit you're going to eat is not edible, you know. And so this middle core is kind of like a pineapple core. Generally, people don't eat that and on the pineapple, and I definitely don't eat that on the jackfruit. Uh, the parts that you're not going to want to eat are like... Uh, all the white parts. So in, as you'll see when I open this guy up, you're going to want to eat the yellow fruits and inside each fruit is like one seed. So here's a little jackfruit seed. Now if you're a raw foodist, you're generally not going to eat the seeds. Uh, you, they probably are edible raw, but in general how they are used in traditional cultures is you could actually, um, they boil them or bake them and salt them and eat them like nuts. So if you guys, uh, you guys could totally do that yourself. Also, because this is a fresh fruit, all these seeds are viable because it's a tropic fruit. It has short viability. So I do encourage you guys to tr plant these seeds if you are in a location where you could grow jackfruits. Uh, currently in the United States, it's uh, places like uh, South Florida and Hawaii. That's where I've seen uh, jackfruits um, produce. That being said, if you grow them other places, you could kind of grow them inside as an ornamental or for fun. Or, uh, you know, grow them inside and then take them to your friends that live in South Florida and have them plant some jackfruit trees. But yeah, so oh, let me, let me go ahead and uh, cut out one of these uh, little pods for you guys. So uh, what we're going to do is I just like to take a knife. And basically these jackfruit pods are held on in two positions. They're held on to the core. That's where all the nutrients are being fed into it. And then they're kind of held on at the skin. So to get into one of these pods, basically I'll take this uh, little knife. And uh, as you guys can see, this one actually has low, low, low or no latex. It's not oozing out. So this is a really ripe one. So uh, basically I cut right at the at the core and this is a half a piece and then I'll cut right down here at the skin and then basically you could just uh, flip a piece up so you guys could see some strings on there uh, the strings if they're like or if they're like the color of the fruit like deep yellow in this case then they're edible um, you could eat them they may not be as sweet as like the the fruit pods themselves but they're totally edible and even the white strings here that I'm pulling off that you don't need to eat, you could eat, they're not gonna hurt you, they have no flavor and they're just kind of more fiber. I, mean, I wanna save myself for actually more uh, fruit instead of this stuff. Uh, all, this, all this stuff goes to my compost bins so they feed my microbes in my compost bins which then in turn uh, end up feeding my garden. Also, you can see a little bit of the, uh, the testa or the uh, 
little fruit, uh, the seed skin I peeled off, and then we get to eat, uh, this is one of the half fruit pods. Mmm. Wow, man. Really good flavor. Now, if you've never eaten jackfruit before, some people say it tastes between like a cross between a banana and a pineapple and a mango, maybe a melon. I like to say it just tastes like jackfruit. And jackfruit tastes most like uh, gum that you guys have had, maybe in the past. Hopefully you guys don't eat it anymore. But juicy fruit gum. Juicy fruit gum is modeled after the flavor of jackfruit. So I encourage you guys to eat jackfruit instead of juicy fruit gum for that amazing gum flavor. Totally healthy for you too, man. Who would have thought? All right, let's go ahead and get more into this uh, cutting demonstration. So once I cut it in half, once again, this side is going to go on the fridge. So we'll put that aside. Move this guy up front and center for you guys. What I like to do next is actually cut this in half and then one side goes to my girlfriend to dig through, one side goes to me. How I do this, I'll take the knife and what I want to do is I actually want to cut right through the middle of the stem here. So now that I got it cut in half, you'll see that I actually have two sides and this is what the two sides look like. And uh, this is what I was talking about, right? This is maybe the, not the best shaped jackfruit, but it was one of the riper ones that I saw. But you guys can see like up in this piece here, up at the top, Right, there's a pod here, and then up at the top it's like all white, or even worse on this side, right? There's a pod here, and then up here it's all white. So this is basically like, like uh, I don't know, <laughs> uh, a zone where there's no fruit. So it's kind of like a waste, this whole top part of the fruit. There's no fruit in there. It's kind of like a dud. But uh, anyways, now my mission is to basically cut out this white stem, because this white stem holds all the fruit um, inside, so I want to be able to access that. So what I'll then do now is uh, then I'm going to go ahead and take uh, my knife here and I'm going to cut down all the way through the stem, but not, not go all the way through just to cut through the stem. Once I, got, once I figure I got the stem cut through, I'll then pull it in half and you guys can see now I got more fruit there. And then I'll go ahead and do this again. I'll take my knife, once again, cut through this half of the stem straight down. Then I'll take my fingers and I'll rip this apart. Then I'll do it again over here. And one of the nice things when you got a ripe jackfruit, no latex. Like there's no latex, nothing sticking to my fingers. I didn't really even have to lube up with coconut oil. But it was good to show you guys because probably most of you guys will. <laughs> um, then once I do that, generally I might carve it at this point. But sometimes I like to even go a little bit thinner. This is probably a little bit too thin. I maybe like to do normally fourths. And then once I get it to this point, you guys can see what it looks like right there. Let me hold this up for you guys. That's when I take maybe like a smaller knife. And now my goal and only goal is to basically uh, take this uh, part and I'm only going to cut out the stem and I'm going to leave all the fruit, right? So this is where you kind of kind of pay attention. You want to look at the back side and the side you're cutting. And you want to put the knife right, right below the point where you see the white disappear and the uh, yellow or the fruit start to starts. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut and uh, take my time, cut back. You don't want to cut too shallow, you don't want to cut too deep. If you're cutting too shallow, you're not going to be able to get the fruit out. If you're cutting too deep, you're sacrificing some of the fruit that's in there. So I got that piece off. And let me go ahead and do all of them and we'll come back at you uh, when I'm done with this uh, step. All right, so just got that last piece cut out, and this is what we're left with now, right? We're left with a half of a jackfruit with this, with basically just the uh, the middle core moved, and now we could just take this fruit and lay it out, and if we could just uh, separate out like this, and all the pods pretty much separate out. So now you could just go in there with your fingers like this, and you could just literally uh, grab out one whole pod, and this is one whole pod. This is actually a nice size, big pod right here. That's what it looks like. And then I'm going to go ahead and bite into this. And then in the middle of the pod, mmm, that's a good jackfruit. You guys can see the seed. There's the seed. So, you know, you could eat the seed coating. The part that goes around the seed, I like to take it off. But it basically it's just a fiber for you. That's that part right there. 
Then we got the uh, jackfruit. Mmm, man, that's so good. Anyways, my girlfriend's re re ready and waiting to eat this because I said, hey, hon, I got to do a video to share with people how to get the best jackfruit. So I'm pretty good at doing it. Now, hopefully after watching this video, you guys will be pretty good as well. So lots of few things I want to share with you guys before I go and enjoy jackfruit with my girlfriend in the sun is, uh, number one, is once you get it to this point and you have it all cut open like this, right, you're going to want to eat this jackfruit fairly soon. Once it's exposed to the air, it could start to rot, go bad, all this kind of stuff. If you don't end up eating this, I do encourage you guys uh, to take out all the pods, uh, take out the seeds, and then put them in a little you know, jar in your fridge, and then you can take them to work easy. Um, I, when I'm eating jackfruit, I don't bother to take out all the pods because I'm basically working twice. I'll, I just like to actually take the whole jackfruit, cut it open like this, spread it open, take one pod and eat it at a time. This also slows you down. Eating, very important to take your time when eating. The goal of eating is not just to get the delicious fruit in you as quickly and as fast as possible, but it's to enjoy the total experience. That's why I like to eat the jackfruit underneath the warm summer sun. Um, pick it and eat it, enjoy it each piece at a time and eat it rather slowly. Um, so yeah, but once you get it like this, you know, if you have it in a container, store it in the fridge easily for three to four days. If it's like this, still uncut, you know, and you cover the bottom and you have actually all the pods out, it'll store easily another week, no problem whatsoever. Originally, uh, jackfruit grew in Southeast Asia. And so Indian subcontinent has it and places in Southeast Asia, Asian countries has a lot of jackfruit, but now it's being grown in Mexico. And so most of the jackfruit that you buy in the United States, in the continental United States anyways, unless you're in South Florida, is imported from Mexico. The quality can vary widely, but I find they actually do a fairly good job at sending in fairly uh, ripe jackfruit that's not like super, you know, unripe provided you use the, the tips that I uh, that you guys uh, saw earlier. Now, for people that are in the industry and into selling jackfruit that are watching this, I would encourage you guys to, um, you know, to sell more jackfruit because I'm all about places, grocery stores, fruit shops, anywhere selling more jackfruit, hopefully maybe even Costco one day so I could buy co jackfruit for cheap. And I want you guys to grow it, start growing it organically because right now, currently, imported jackfruit is only conventional it's not certified organic, although maybe used, maybe growing with organic practices. I'm not exactly sure. But despite that, I like to enjoy some jackfruit sometimes as one of my many fruits that I eat in my life. But the main re the way to sell more jackfruit, for those of you guys that are in the industry, is to sample it out. Very important. Much like you guys are watching at home, you guys never tried jackfruit. I want you guys to go out and find some jackfruit and try it. Because once you try it, once you use my tips to get a good one, you're going to be hooked and you will be a jackfruit consumer for life. I've met very few people that when I'm at a trade show or where some weird place eating jackfruit, people always come up to me, right? What's that fruit you're eating? I get to explain them. Oh, it's jackfruit. It tastes like bubblegum. Here, have a piece. They're like, wow, that's really good. So I think it's really a sin that places that sell jackfruit sell whole uncut jackfruit. And people are asking me when I'm buying it, what does it taste like? What is it? Because people don't know. So it's very important to have demonstrators that have a ripe jackfruit cut and open sample it to people because once people start sampling it, they will be buying it. And of course, another really good way to sell it is actually also sell it pre-cut so people could get uh, for sure good pieces without, without having to buy a big one that's bad. And of course, of course, I would encourage industry to harvest them as ripe and ship them as ripe as possible so everybody here uh, consuming them could eat some of the best jackfruit in the world. And now you guys could do that thanks to my video and my helpful tips um, on how to pick a jackfruit. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, hey, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. That'll encourage me to do more how to pick a fruit topic videos. Post your comments down below. Uh, post uh, comments on what fruits you'd like me to cover next. I've had an experience with uh, purchasing and selecting and picking wide varieties of different fruits in my uh, lifetime of eating uh, 22 years now on a plant-based raw fruit and vegetable dominated uh, diet. Also be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. I have several other videos on jackfruits and uh, eating them, how to eat them, selecting them, all this kind of stuff. Also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on any of my new and upcoming episodes I have coming out about every five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. 
And also be sure to share this video with somebody else that really loves jackfruit or that should be loving jackfruit so they can get to know how to pick a ripe one because, you know, far too many videos online, in my opinion, are just, oh, do this, do that, and they're not telling the holster and how to pick the right one. And, you know, with these 10 tips, I'm confident you'll be able to pick a right one, too. So, uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time, and until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables, including your jackfruit. They're always the best. <laughs>